What's up, everybody? Welcome to the RDL show, the Ryan D. Lee show. It is a Friday in the new time, 1230. Same bat channel, different uh, time frame, same people. Sky Guasco, Jonathan Rifkin, Charlie Moss will be joining me a little bit later. Um, question of the day. Get your guys' juices flowing towards the end. Who will the San Francisco 49ers draft third overall? They moved heaven and earth to move to three to grab a quarterback. So who do they got? Huh? That will be the question. We'll get to that a little bit later in the show uh, when we get discussing. We'll see what the, the fans think about um, the show being moved to 1230. I think we got a good response from people last time. So we'll see. See what that looks like. It is a Friday. I um usually open with something you know uh, within my life my own personal life things that are going on uh in the country and things like that wellness is one of them um i went and worked out today for the first time in over a year uh since the pandemic started my transformation has been all food based and you know playing golf and going just being active walking but i hadn't like lifted a weight or <laughs> or anything like that. So I hired a trainer and we started this morning at 6 a.m. So, okay, um, 5.30 I was up, I was out the door. Um, we got started and she kicked my butt, all right? Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to walk tomorrow, but I felt like a million bucks riding, riding, driving back in the car, just like I always do when, um, you know when you release those endorphins and it's it's hard to remember that feeling those feelings of those endorphins being released if you could bottle them and release them you know for you to remember like before your workout you'll know what you're going to feel like when you're all when you're all done and to go back and do it so mine's about wellness all right i have a three and a half year old boy at home um, it's the best thing I've ever done. And I'm going to be an old dad. He's when, when he's graduating from high school, I'm going to be 60. So people are going to probably be looking at me like, that's so cool. Your grandpa comes to all your games. Um, I, I don't know, but I want to be around forever. I want to be around as long as I can to watch him grow. Now we have some good genes. Yesterday was my grandmother's 93rd birthday party or 93rd birthday and they had a little party right so I, I called her yesterday and asked her what she was going to do and she told me she says well there's a local restaurant in town called the montana club back in montana that gives you the percentage off of what your age is of your meal so she wanted to go and get 93 percent off her meal i said well what are you going to order well the 93 year old little grandma who had uh, a grandson who played Pac-10 or Pac-12 quarterback for 14 consecutive years, 1994 to 2008, by the way, um, said, I'm going to get the biggest steak they have on the menu. That's exactly what she did last night. So I want to be around for a long time, and it's about wellness. And it's not just one thing, right? You just don't do one thing. This is a, this is a substantive and additional thing you add consistently. The food was a big part of it, right? Um, getting my blood test. So I understood what was affecting me, how inflamed I was, the inflammation in my blood, um, hormone deficiencies, things like that. Um, so it, it, there's no other thing you can invest in that's more important. We find ways to spend money in all different directions and what makes us happy. And it's, it, it, it can be wasteful when the biggest and most um, meaningful investment you can make is in yourself in your mental health, in your physical health, and in your wellness. And so I think I say this on my show, so it's public, it's there, it's another form of accountability. Like, did Leaf just tell us this whole story about going to a trainer one day and then, you know, never did it again? It's like the story I told about when I went and helped people le uh, learn how to read in prison. If I would have went that one day and never gone back, nothing would have changed. I would have still been the most miserable, self-loathing, angry person you can imagine. But it's about consistency. It's about showing up. You know, we 
our grassroots show. We haven't, uh, you know, we haven't hit the monetary algorithm point on YouTube. Our sponsors are very generous, but you know, they are, um, you know, starting from the bottom, just like us, you know, this is about, this is really about consistency. This is about showing up. This is for doing this is good for my mental health. Um, it helps. Um, so on this Friday, and when I come to you and talk to you about wellness, that's what it means. Personal um, wellness, self, um, self-soothing um, and not self-sabotage. That's what this is. And, you know, you can use the show. You can use our relationship through the show as an accountability partner. Right. You know, you you say something publicly that you're going to do something and you you commit to it. You know, you why do you get a why do you get a personal trainer, Ryan? Well, I do it because a there's an accountability piece to it because I'm gonna have to dish out money for it, and that really puts a, a, a certain accountability to it because it's costing me money. I'm not gonna pay money and, and not get, um, you know, get get the worth from it. And you know, um, having it early is is something to kickstart my day. So these are things that I put into my life that I can have accountability around that will will help me down the stretch. Um, it's something I've adapted here in the last six years, definitely here in the last year around the control factor, right? I control this, right? This is, uh, completely my choice. This is a healthy, positive, healthy choice alternative than, than the negative and toxic one where you just order Taco Bell through, through DoorDash every night. And, uh, you know, you sit on your butt and watch a bunch of TV. Um, so take, take a peek into that. Take a peek into your, yourself. Take a look in the mirror. See what your wellness looks like. Doesn't mean you have to do any of that. Um, just the next right thing, right? Um, and guilt can be one of two factors. Guilt can motivate you. And guilt can also shame you. Because if you set something up and don't achieve it, you may feel guilty about it. It's not anything for that. Um, again, flawed. We're all flawed human beings. You know, am I going to feel too sore tomorrow and go, oh, my God, I can't work out again until, you know, next Wednesday? Maybe self-care. All right. So everybody enjoy the weekend. Get ready for the NFL draft. We're going to have a big week of shows next week. Hopefully we'll get a couple guests on, talk about uh, the impact of the draft. Sky and Jonathan and Charlie and I will all be submitting our mock drafts this weekend so we can get them up and, and get them rolling uh, next week. I also last night for the first time in over a year, fellas, um, went to a live sporting event in person. Hadn't done that. Uh, I, I mean, I guess you could call my job for ESPN when I covered uh, CD Lamb and, and Jalen Hurts Pro Day as as the last kind of live sporting event that I that I attended. But this was the first professional sports one I had attended in over well over a year. Went to the Dodgers Padres game last night. And thoroughly enjoyed myself, uh, had great seats, had an unbelievable game. And what has transpired with the Padres over the last couple years, really investing in some players in free agency and actually writing checks that they wouldn't do in the past. Um, they put together quite a good team. Defensively, they are stellar. The right side of that um, infield with the shortstop and Tatis and the third baseman and uh, in Machado, you have about $600 million, but they're studs. They're great players. They're the reason why they won last night. Tati scored. Machado uh, um, sent a, uh, recorded an RBI that, that knocked him in. Um, the second baseman in, in Tati said shortstop made one of the best double plays I've seen to really seal the game. And, and you got Eric Hosmer at, at, at first base. They are, they are a well-oiled machine. They have the best ERA until a couple days ago in baseball. So they were primed and ready. They'd lost three consecutive. The Dodgers seem like the best team in baseball. And there's a rivalry that has erupted between these two teams, not because of the geographics, because that's never been the case, right? I mean, the, the closest uh, LA has to any team anywhere is the San Diego Padres. Yet this was always a very lopsided series whenever they met. And it wasn't a rivalry, but they don't really like each other. Uh, and they have, the Rodgers have a bunch of young guys that have some swagger and LA's kind of become the, the veterans who, who continue to win and are world champions. So 
last night, the Padres found a way to win three to two. And tonight, Kershaw and you Darvish go head to head against one another. So this is this is turning out to be a, a heck of a rivalry and one that I'm really looking forward to uh, watching play out and seeing in person. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, the the uh, the geography doesn't have everything to do with the new rivalry, but it certainly helps. You know, uh, there's there's some some new murmurs in the baseball community that this might be the new Yankees Red Sox rivalry that's dominated baseball forever. Obviously, the Giants and the Dodgers have had their rivalry forever, too, dating back to their time in New York together in Brooklyn and and uh, New York. But um, San Diego has come around the last couple of years. The Dodgers have dominated the NL West for nearly a decade since the Giants had their World Series. The Padres have never led the all-time series since being uh, in the league. The Dodgers currently lead 485 to 404 head-to-head. But what makes a good rivalry is two good to great teams. It makes two, um, you know, having a little bit of bad blood, which we've seen in some of these games, great pitching, great hitting. Either one of these teams can win any given night. Uh, as we've seen, the Dodgers so far have dominated the Padres, but the Padres got one on them last night. They're both probably going to be in the playoff race if guys stay healthy, and it's going to come down to the wire, and the Giants are in the middle of this as well. So the NL West, which was the Dodgers dominant and everybody else for a long time, is three of the best teams in baseball. Three of the top eight teams in baseball are in this division, and the Padres and the the Dodgers and the Giants, all West Coast in California – uh, are really the center of, of baseball right now, along with the A's in Oakland, along with the Seattle Mariners up in Washington. So it's it's baseball is rarely West Coast prevalent and dominant at all. And right now, outside of the, the Red Sox and the Angels, or the Red Sox really, uh, West Coast is dominating baseball right now, and it's a big due part to the Dodgers and the Padres. Well, I I mean, you should probably know this. I mean, for, for six years, the 49ers won – or sorry, the, the the Giants won a World Series in every even year, right? They won in 2012, 2014, 2016, I think. Uh, so, two, 2000, 2010, 12, and 14. Okay. All right. So, you know, it's, you know, with the Dodgers, with the chances they had, it really could have been a West Coast, um, you know, drubbing by by Major League in, in Major League Baseball circles. Um, but it's, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun, it was fun to be there. Um, you know, sorry, Sunfair, but I, but I just trashed my my uh, intestines with uh, Dodger dogs and nachos and uh, the good stuff. If you go if you go to the game, you got to do it. And especially when you buy these tickets, when you get these tickets, they're rather expensive. But what comes on with them is complimentary free food during the whole time. So you just order the whole menu and just snack the whole game. That's the only, that's the only way to compensate for like how expensive the tickets are. I feel because concessions. If you were just to buy tickets and go buy concessions, it'd probably be the same amount. Is paying for good seats, so that's how I, how I, 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 that's how I rationalize it in the end. Um, when you guys go to baseball games, what, like, like I don't go to many, but when I do, and when I go to sporting events, I, I just want the best fan experience for myself because it, it's not going to happen often. So I'm, I'm willing to like splurge and spend more money because it's a one-off. It's not, it's not buying season tickets and you know and having that cost all year long, but rather, you know, it's a one-off and I'm going to enjoy myself, whatever that is. So when I go to baseball games, you know, I, 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 I sit close and I'm in the action and hear what's going on. And, and uh, um, what about you? Are you okay? If you want to go to a game, you'll sit in the nosebleeds just to sit in the nosebleeds or, or when you go to a game, you want to, you want to be pampered a little bit. I, I honestly growing up as a kid in, in San Francisco and going to Oakland A's, A's games across the Bay bridge there. I went to a lot of them and very rarely would I, well, my dad, I guess, but me growing up would pay to be down up front. Honestly, I kind of like nosebleeds just because I can see the whole field better. Um, I know the game well enough to kind of understand what's happening anyway, so I don't have to be right there. Also, I like to kind of poke around the ballpark and sit over here for a while, sit over here for a while, sit over there to get different perspectives. And you can't do that down low um, because they just, they're, you know, watching your seats. So I kind of like that uh, up top feel personally. The, the is it because you've never sat close so you don't know the experience no. guy? Is that why? No, check check this out. Quick quick story, 30 seconds to let Jonathan go. I have sat close plenty of times. I played a um I played a season of uh junior college baseball at College of Marin 
and uh, we went to a bunch of games to usher and do things for community service. And we sat down front behind the backstops and everything else. I went to an A's game when I was a kid. They used to have $2 Wednesdays when I was a kid. I went to an A's game right behind the dugout, and Frank Thomas of the White Sox came out on deck and uh, just, you know, I was probably 10 years old at the time. <laughs> and he had a full conversation with us right there in the in the on deck circle and stuff. It was really cool. I sat down the lines and stuff. The, the big, big hurt. hurt. Absolutely fantastic, super sweet guy. Anyway, um, I have sat down low. I just, when I prefer, first of all, I'll save a few bucks if you sit up top. And honestly, I'm a sucker for minor league baseball. We have a great team here in Eugene, uh, the Eugene Emeralds. When I go to those games, which is still professional baseball, I do sit up and close because you can. When I go to pro ballparks, I like to sit up top, see the whole field, and sit in five or seven different seats throughout the game. And I just can't do that down low. Yeah. I'm spoiled. I'm sliding down low, I know. What about Ryan, you, Jonathan? Ryan, you're spoiled too, though. Like, I, I am spoiled. You're so, you're so freaking spoiled. You used to sit there in the office and call ESPN, like PR department, or like travel services to make sure that you got like the the VIP experience. And I'm like that too. Like, if, if I have the opportunity, I'd much rather be pampered than like as I get if older. If I could, I would. I'll throw that out there right no, now. No, I'm okay, all about okay. it. Because, <laughs> no, like, what I'm saying, like, I mean, it, it's a splurge for me to yeah. do it. Like yeah. it is, but I'm only, it's a one off. It's like, I'm not going to 42 games this year. I'm going to go to. No. So if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. But, uh, but, uh, but the point I'm making with this is like, if you're given the opportunity to be pampered and like, like be a part of the action at the same time, which is like what the job, like what working as a media member for this thing is like, you're going to take advantage. So for me, like I, the first game I ever went to with a press pass was my junior year of high school. I forged that press pass. The next year I went to the Clipper <laughs> game and got in and sat in the, on the press row for a playoff game when the Clippers uh, played the Warriors. It was insane. And like that was like – and then I went to Oregon and I was a broadcaster. And I never – like I sat in the student section and it was fine. But the more I got into the luxury of attending a game and being in the press box and having a meal at halftime and having a meal – like having all of – like clean bathrooms, like – not the, the seats around me don't smell like urine and throw up and beer. The more the older I get and the more involved I get in that, the harder it is for me to want to participate as a fan at any venue in any capacity. once you once you've experienced something like that, truly, like once I got to see, sit courtside at an NBA game, ruined me. Yep. Because now yep. the only way I can go to an NBA game is either to sit courtside. Or to be up top in a in a suite where I can relax. I cannot. I cannot. I can't do it otherwise. Can't do it. Um, and I've had friends of mine who have season tickets for the Lakers, like pretty good seats. You know, like twenty five rows up center. Um, like they invite me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, man, I can't go. But why? I I can't do it, man. I'll. You're, I'll, you're gonna turn I'll, those tickets I'll, down? Oh, I turn them down all the time. My 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 financial advisor has season tickets for Lakers, <laughs> right? Great seats, like twenty rows behind Genie Bus, and and. And I, and he, he always asks me. I'm like, I can't do it, man. Those seats are too rough on my knees, and and I and it's just I don't, I don't, I won't enjoy it. So don't uh, don't waste them on me. Don't waste them on me, bud. So yeah, I'm Vegas ball. If I'm gonna donate four hours of my time, I want to be taken care of. Yeah. yeah, and when thing when things clear up and we all come down to to party with Ryan in Southern California, we'll uh we'll gladly take those tickets. And I'll tell you right well, now, apparently, gladly, gladly. apparently all the bets you're winning, you guys will have enough money to buy yourselves these. Perfect. These now, I think we right? just wager a suite at this point. Yeah, yeah I will. I will, I will say. I will say this: when you're talking, when you're talking baseball, watching a baseball game at the ballpark and watching a basketball game on the court. Sitting behind home plate and sitting courtside, in my opinion, are night and day as far as the perspective of but the I don't game. Sit, I don't sit. I don't sit uh, behind the plate. I don't like that either. I don't feel like you get a good view of the. I love where I sit. I sit right down the third base line because I played shortstop and I played third base, and I like watching it from that angle, watching the pitcher come in, and also I can tell if there's a, especially uh, if there there's a ton of righties. You know, in Major League Baseball, you know you're going to get a ton of lefties at the plate, which means I could get some pop pies. You know, did you bring your glove? Line. So, no, I didn't bring my glove. They, you know, they they started hanging those nets all the way, yeah, um, throughout out the, now. The, and it's, whole, the whole line. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult now to to get. Uh, we had a line drive come flying right through some, like the the family sitting next to us down the stretch. 
you know, reacted like anybody else would when they, when a ball you think is coming towards you, you know, the nachos went all over and your drink went all oh, over. Oh man! <laughs> so I said, ah, you know, rookie rookie mistake over there. You gotta right. re- you gotta read the field. You know, you gotta you gotta know what you're working with. So that was my night. Looking forward to what baseball, um, what that rivalry brings to the table. Um, what you can't bring to Dodger games, unfortunately, and maybe my friend Carl should invest in this is getting a Sunfair um, booth there at Dodger Stadium. Sunfair.com, everybody, personalized, delivered, healthy meals right to your door. If you live in the LA or Phoenix area, you can transform your body like this. Now, if I can look like that with just food, what the hell is going to happen when I start hitting this trainer up three week, three days a week? Either I'm going to die or um, I'm going to look Fucking great. All right. So sunfair.com. Uh, go there, sign up for everything, fill out um, your information, click on Carl Farrell as your sales representative, and then click on the RDL show is about where you heard about it. And you'll get 10% off your first home delivery. Do it now. Sunfair.com. Start now. It's all about the food. Today's way to eat. All righty, boys. Um, we had some terrible news, um, out of California and around the nation when it comes to the basketball world, uh, locally here, um, Terrence Clark, who was probably going to be a, um, uh, lottery pick, former Kentucky basketball player, um, played his lone season for the Wildcats last year, died in a car accident in Los Angeles last night. He was 19. Um, Driving back from a workout, ran a red light supposedly, uh, and uh, was fatally injured. This is a, I mean, this is, I mean, this is the second well-known car accident we've heard about, you know, in the state of California um, during this time, right? This, this, this instance was a fatality. Tiger Woods was very close to that. Um, how how precious life is? We talk about that all the time. Um, and how this this news kind of shook the basketball world. And you guys can speak to it more closely. You guys are around the recruiting side of it a lot more, especially you, Jonathan. Um, what was the impact this young man had at the basketball level? And where was his career uh, about to go before this untimely death? Yeah, I mean, Terrence was – anybody who goes to Kentucky um, and plays for John Calipari is a guy who – is not only a renowned basketball player, but that that coaching staff purposefully picks high quality people. Like that's that's their thing. It's like these guys, most of the guys at Kentucky that play are their first season. So they have one season to make these boys into men and they want to make sure that they have a multiple player to be able to impact these student athletes, you know, so that way they're ready to go with the professional life. Um, and they have a there's a bunch of Southern California talent on that team. And BJ Boston who went to Sierra Canyon up in Chatsworth, where they were both right down the street from working out last night, uh, right before they got into the car and this crash happened. Um, he's going to be another. He's a, he's going to be a top eight draft pick as well. And he went to Kentucky, and like they were both in the same realm coming out of high school. Clark is from Boston, worked out in LA, went to a school in Boston before finishing up in New Hampshire, um, and was just a consensus top five player. He was incredible. Did a lot of charity work around the country. Um, again, worked out in LA, was pretty big in the community, worked out with Siri Cannon, worked out with guys um, that are currently in the, in the NBA, like Cassius Winston um, with, with, uh, and Marcus Bagley up in Sacramento. Uh, Winston is with the Pacers um, and a couple of other guys coming into the NBA draft this year. So he was super renowned in that. And then he also, he was really close with current NBA players. He was really close mm-hmm. with Jalen Brown and Donovan Mitchell. Um, Luka Doncic had some stuff to say about like, this guy was talented, but he was also very communicative in, in big circles. Um, and, and he had quite a stigma around him about him, a positive stigma. Um, that was, he was super sociable. He was always smiling. He just worked his ass off each and every day. Um, and that's where, why he was going to be a top 10 pick in the NBA draft this upcoming season. Uh, and just, it's crazy to think about how quickly, I mean, the entire, the air just changes, right? Like when you get news Mm -hmm. like this, one, this guy, he literally Clark signed with with a uh, with Clutch with, Sports uh, and Rich Paul. Clutch Sports, right? Rich Paul was his agent. Two he signed with LeBron James basically, right? Two days ago, and the next day, 
Like he doesn't, he's not walking this earth. And it's scary to think about like, and in a freak accident like that, we oftentimes think of athletes as um, like almost like demigods, right? Like in like, yeah, like, like incapable. And right? we do as we do as individuals, there's like, we're bulletproof, you know, yeah. nothing's going to, nothing's going to stop us. We've seen some, you guys may be too young to remember the name Len Bias, but yeah. that's my, that's yeah. my age. I don't know if you guys remember, um, you know, the, uh, the Hank Gathers, um, situation, Loyola Marymount, mm -hmm. um, you know, those, those things in a life being taken, um, you know, out of nowhere when they have everything going forward for them. I mean, Kobe is an example of the sociological impact of that, right? At the highest level. And this obviously a little bit more minute, a little bit more niche, but the impact is felt by a lot of people in, in, in a similar way. Um, and like you said, like 19 years old, like this guy was younger than me. And then what goes back, I mean, Ty Jones, right, with Utah, was shot and killed uh, earlier yeah. this year running back. The, there was a northern uh, Texas basketball recruit who was just shot and killed in Texas this past week. Like there are a even, lot. Of even even going to um, Oscar Frere in Grand Canyon about a month yeah, ago, who was also in a car died, accident. Also died in a car accident. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think about that how <laughs> – I don't know. I don't know why this seems to have been the case during this pandemic, and maybe it's because it's just got a more of a, a microscope on it because of that. But it seems like there's been more notable deaths, um, or ones that we recognize more um, than there normally is. And I don't know if it's just because we've been locked at home and we've been our eyes have been kind of glued to news and things like that. But seemingly it feels like there's been a lot more plus, you know, the drastic and just horrifying um, results and loss of life because of COVID, I think nearing 700,000 lives. That's it's, it's really been a difficult, um, you know, 18 months for a lot of people. And, and last night was just another example of, of how tragic it is when we lose some, when we lose any life, but one that young with that much promise and seemingly um, a very good person. And so our thoughts and prayers as always go out to the family. Um, and we're hearing there may do some, something special to honor him. Of course, the night of the draft um, we'll see. Speaking of the draft, um, we kind of wanted to get into some other positions. Now, I'm going to let the boys kind of infiltrate and, and take you guys through this because though, you know, I focus on, on, on every player who was drafted, my focus centers around and what everybody knows is guys who pass the ball, guys who protect the passer and guys who, who rush the passer. I think those are the game changers. I think you can plug and play any of the other ones. And in the draft this year, with a ton of wide receiver talent, people are really excited about where they could get their wide receiver. And I've cautioned people to be, be careful. Don't overreach if you don't need it. Like, I mean, if you are a solid team and you adding Jamar Chase at the wide receiver position, like puts a butt, puts a bow on your, on your team, then by all means, he is a unbelievable player. Okay. Um, but I think they're a dime a dozen. Justin Jefferson was a special player last year, but Minnesota was mediocre at best, right? And he had he had the greatest rookie receiver season ever, right? It 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 matters, it does. Um, and same with running backs. But you got Najee Harris, who may be the most complete football player in terms of maturity, size, strength, athleticism, all the things you ask for. But I I, I can't stress this enough. Don't reach for somebody unless you don't have it. Now, this is terribly different in terms of the fans, right? Fans want, you know, they want the triplets, right? They want Emmett and Michael Irvin and Troy Aikman. They want those things in their places. And they also have fantasy teams. Now, I've never played a down of fantasy football. I don't anticipate myself playing a down of fantasy football at any time. Um, but these fans do. You guys are from a younger generation. You partake in this. You have a damn podcast about it, Sky. Award-winning podcast. 
You want an award winning, award winning podcast? Yes, yes. Take it away, boys. Tell us about the other players in this draft and why these teams are so excited about them. In particular, your fantasy teams. I think it's funny that you claim that you've never played a down of fantasy football because, according to fantasy football today, you've actually played two years worth of fantasy football. Now as a player, not necessarily as an actual owner of a team. Uh, <laughs> but, a, but a guy that actually played football? Yeah. Exactly. So technically, I mean, technically. Um, You've you never had, owned you a team. Player. You were part of you it. You never owned a team. You averaged 13.1 fantasy points per game your, your uh, All right. 2000 season in San Diego. Is that, is that really bad? That's say honestly. It's, it, it's below average, I will say. In the two-quarterback flex, you would be on a roster. All right. All right. All right, Sky, you're the fantasy guy, though. So, anyways, um, yeah, Sky, you should probably go ahead and uh, well, do the way here. Yeah, and, and I don't necessarily need to make this a fantasy football conversation. If you'd like to you know, hear more about that, I do run a podcast, Candlestick Kids Fantasy Football Podcast. Feel free to check us out. Jonathan and I just actually did a big series uh, about all of the incoming uh, fantasy options in the draft. But to Ryan's point, and we've talked a lot about the quarterbacks here on this show, so I'm going to kind of divert around, away from quarterbacks specifically. But to Ryan's point, if we're talking, you know, not fantasy relevant, but NFL importance, you talk about defensive ends, outside linebackers. I would say even a shutdown cornerback is very important for an NFL squad. And then you also have, of course, the uh, left tackles and right tackles if you know if you have a left hander like Tua. So you talk about guys like Penesul out of Oregon. You know, uh, Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern, I think is going to be a top pick as well. You have some other left tackles deeper in the draft, which are important. And then you have defenders. Micah Parsons out of Penn State could be a top 10 pick, was on Rich Eisen this morning. I saw a great interview with him. Caleb Farley is one of my favorite players in the draft, period, overall. And he's a cornerback out of Virginia Tech. I think he could be a shutdown corner for a long time and take away a number one option for a team. And we see how important a Jalen Ramsey, you know, uh, Jair Alexander can be in the NFL when you, when you can at least harness the number one option. So even talking away from the, the fun fancy names of the running backs and wide receivers, you talk about the left tackles and the defensive ends. There's a lot of talent in this draft and the normal fan who is fantasy football focused doesn't think about defenders and they don't think about offensive linemen in regards to the NFL draft, but Ryan will be the first to tell you when you have the GM cap and you're thinking about an NFL team and the nucleus of what makes an NFL team better, it's those positions and a great running back, a great uh, wide receiver, a great tight end is frosting after that, but you have to have that that core. So fantasy football aside, I totally agree with, with Ryan and, and focusing on some of these other names here. Well, so Ryan, do you think that Panea Sewell deserves a spot at your dinner table of fantasy football coverage because he is a tackle, a transcendent tackle that will be protecting a quarterback? Definitely, definitely. And if he isn't the first guy taken off the board to the Cincinnati Bengals at five, uh, I don't know what what anybody's thinking of if that's the case. He's the the best best player. Uh, Vera Tucker out of USC is also uh, another guy who can play both offensive guard as well as tackle. Very versatile which I think makes him very uh, a real interesting concept. I think, you know, the Chargers at 13, just another guy to help protect Justin Herbert. I mean, that's the way that I would build up that team. Um, you know, they have the pass rusher in Bosa. Uh, they have the pass rusher. Um, um, what's the Ingram? Um, you know, they, they got uh, they got Derwin James coming back from injury. This, this Chargers team could be very good if you are able to make sure and keep people off your now rookie of the year and, um, you know, franchise quarterback, Justin Herbert. So, yeah, th those are the pieces that I want in the puzzle. But I get it. You know, I, I talked about last year in the Cowboys, and Jerry Jones can't help himself, right? CeeDee Lamb was sitting there at, at in the middle of the round of the first round. They didn't need another wide receiver, right? CeeDee Lamb didn't do anything for them this year. Uh, what they needed was defensive help or – some substantive offensive line help to make sure Dak Prescott doesn't get pulled down and break a leg. You know, that's, that's the thing that, that we talk about. CD lamb was a, you know, was something they didn't need, right? It was just a, it was a, it was a shiny toy that, uh, that daddy wanted and the kids couldn't talk him out of it. Right. You know, and that's the way it went. So do you get, do you get that feeling from Jamar Chase then? That that he's a guy that you don't you don't need to reach for. 
that yeah, you know that he's the shiny toy in this watch. He's the shiny definitely. toy that you want that you want to reach for. Definitely. If you if you have like I mean if you are or if you are settled, that's why I would think that wide receivers would go later in the draft because they're not necessarily going to help um get teams over the top. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be a positive. It's never gonna be a um you know a bad pick for the fan base for an influx of offensive juice. You know, Justin Jefferson did that last year after they got rid of Stephon Diggs. He was almost like a swap, you know. So it really wasn't, you know, they they, they need other things with that team. They need to have to to be better at the quarterback position. Uh, Kirk Cousins needs to be better. Uh, and defensively, they need to be better. So these things that exist, and they need to protect better, period. And Justin Jefferson doesn't do that. But if you're ranking at best possible players, like who's the next best possible player in the draft, if you go about it like that, then I get it. Like you're just like, he's the he's the next best. Now you need uh, to fill a hole. You need to fill a hole, and there isn't a player there that that fits that role, then yeah, get it. But but don't you know, don't get the shiny toy just because you like the shiny toy. Get it because you need it. I think that's a I think that's a great point because yeah. you and and I was just gonna say it and then you you uh, took the words out of my mouth. Um it's all about filling need. And if you have a stellar offensive lineman, you have great pass rushers, uh, you have those things handled, then go get the extra wide receiver, a Kyle Pitts or Najee Harris or whatever. Like Pittsburgh Steelers, for example, like are looking for a running back. Most of the other positions they could use some on, on, on line help, but most of the other positions are handled. They need, they need, they've lost every they lost Pouncy, they lost Bill uh Villa. Villanueva, Villanueva. Villanueva, they lost. Uh, forget us. They lost. They, 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 they're gonna the tackle out of uh, Notre Dame. I think might be a, a prime spot for them. They need offensive line help to protect Ben because if Ben well, can't, if Ben can't throw it, it's not gonna matter because they'll right. just stack the box to stop the running and get to the quarterback, and and they won't even matter. Right, and. It's been interesting. I'm going through, you know, we're going to drop our, our mock drafts as a group uh, next Wednesday, so stay tuned to that for sure. But I've been kind of working on it over the last couple of days. And, Ryan, we were talking pre-show. What is the mindset we actually have when we're c- conducting these mock drafts? Is it what we would do if we were running these teams, or is it what we think the teams are going to do regardless? And I'm kind of 50-50, and I'm looking at my list right now. And I have, after the quarterbacks, I'll go at the top. I think that's pretty unanimous. But I have seven non-skill um, players going in the next 10 picks after the quarterbacks go. That means offensive linemen, defensive players, whatever. And I just think that goes to show if you ever do a fantasy football mock draft, you don't do any of those players, defensive linemen and, and uh, offensive tackles. But if you're talking NFL, it's obviously a different approach. Um, I really appreciate listening to – you know, shows like fantasy football networks, for example, that have NFL players come on because Ryan, like yourself, they have your mentality and your mindset of this is a team need. This is what you fill. And it, it gives a lot of perspective for the fantasy football heads who only think about skill players, touchdowns, catches, and rushes because Najee Harris is not a uh, focal point for maybe in a, any NFL team in the first round in fantasy football. Outside of maybe Trevor Lawrence, Najee Harris will be the first pick in every fantasy football draft with rookies uh, come August. So I think it's a great uh, my dad, uh, perspective. My dad, become, my dad has become this person. He plays in a fantasy football league that only counts touchdowns. It doesn't count yards. Oh, it doesn't count. Just, just only scores. touchdowns? Oh, just scores. Scores. So touchdowns, field, field goals, goals, whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. so he – so Justin Tucker it. goes in the first five, then I guess. <laughs> yeah, you got guys that. Yeah, that's, that, that's a, it's a weird yeah, league for my dad cool. and his best friend, but they're always. I remember I talked to him on Monday. My dad's always complaining about like how his quarterback like they handed it off five times in the in the red zone. What the hell is that about? You know, throw the ball for a touchdown. As a quarterback in that situation, and then, Ryan, and then it's right? vice versa. Also, it's like when they throw the ball, it's like why don't you run the ball? Like you're right there. If you're if you're in a situation though as a QB, you want to throw that ball, right? Like you don't want to hand it off. You want to throw the touchdown. Well, you want to, but you're not going to do it to the detriment of the team. Like if they stack the box, you'll throw it. But I mean, if they they sit back and, and there's and you got a box count, and you know your offensive lineman can just walk it in because they they got leverage. You hand it off all day long. I mean, you just as a quarterback, uh, you have to be smart enough to do it. 
um, or <laughs> or not. And uh, is and, there people agreeing with your point? Oh my god! Sounds like a dying cat. Oh, well, yeah. I, want, I wanted to, to to bring this up really quick. Just revisit the question of the day: Who will the 49ers draft at th- third overall? I think this is a big part of it. Because I'm looking at my mock draft again. We'll re- reveal the results later. But three, four, and five to me change the entire draft for all the other NFL teams. The Niners, the Falcons, and the Bengals well, could doesn't. go. Three does no, it because three's most already, likely three's already done. Three's already done. It's going okay, to be a quarterback, period. So it doesn't but, matter. I agree. But it's who it is. Because in my no, opinion. it doesn't it's, matter who it is. All three, all three guys that are available there for me are 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 the, are the same. You know, no, so no, sure. I, sure. I don't think it matters. I'm I'm bringing up this. If the 49ers, let's say they go Trey Lance, just hypothetical. Right. Will the Falcon will the Falcons go with Justin Fields, who is a play now quarterback, or will they go with somebody else because it's Justin Fields, not Trey Lance? That's They're, what I'm the saying. The Falcons aren't going to draft a quarterback. The Falcons okay. aren't. That's another Arthur question. Smith. What if they yeah, draft Smith a came. If they draft Trey Sewell, what do the Bengals do? They're not. They're going to draft if they don't if they don't if they don't draft if they don't take Kyle Pitts at four. They're gonna they're gonna trade and drop back so they can get their defensive player or something like that. That's that's where the the dominoes lie in this draft for me is what Atlanta does. Yeah, Atlanta controls with what for what the rest of the first round looks like because if they trade out of that spot to a team that moves up to get a quarterback, you can guarantee that there are going to be three or four or five other teams clamoring uh, on the phones with Cincinnati or Miami to get there to get that fifth quarterback. That's yep. how five quarterbacks go in the top six picks. Is if it, if Atlanta moves out of that spot, I don't think they're gonna. I think they add the hybrid tight end to Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, make that offense unstoppable. The problem is the reason why Dan Quinn doesn't have a job because defensively they were horrible. So maybe they need that defensive player, and they can get Micah Parsons further back and draft capital if they move out of that fourth spot. We won't know. But I think they're the I think they're the domino that knocks everything else down. We know what one, two, and three was like. But if they move out of there and somebody moves in to grab a quarterback, I can guarantee there's gonna be three or four or five other teams trying to get up as high as they can to get that fifth quarterback before you know somebody else does. That's gonna be a big, big move. So less than a week. Yeah, less than a week. And when you are watching the draft, crack open an athletic brew, everybody. Oh, that was a good one. That was one hand and everything. Nice. Yeah. No, I'm all I'm on all one hander. Don't worry about it. All right. Athleticbrewing.com, everybody. You can uh, not look like that on the right if you drink a bunch of beer. But if you want to be cool and refreshing, brew without compromise, shop now, okay? Go to athleticbrewing.com and uh, at this uh, at this link and tell them the RDL show sent you. You get 10% off your first delivery on two six packs of athletic brew non-alcoholic brew none of the consequences all the great taste all right anthony davis returned last night uh said his stamina was pretty good shot two for ten uh, 17 minutes 10 in the first half seven in the second four rebounds um you know the brow looked in in mid-season form um you know but they still got beat you know dallas Beat them 115 to 110. Um, they are without LeBron still. They continue to cascade down the rankings um, and continue to fall. I just, I don't know. I I, I understand uh, around the injuries part of this, if they can come back healthy at some point. And when they do, they're a much better team. But I have a hard time thinking, having not played together for the majority of the year, that they can just jumpstart something when the West is looking as good as they are right now. I disagree. I disagree. I think yeah. they're completely fine. LeBron comes back. They're the defending champions. They know how to play together. And and you have to put an account. They have Andre Drummond there. He's a beast. He gets all these boards. He can defend. So that's just another player teams have to look out for with AD and LeBron on the court. So that's just going to help them even more. Everything is fluff except for the point that LeBron James is who you play for play through like the lakers don't have an identity even with anthony davis you can play through anthony davis but you don't need an identity when lebron james is on the court your identity is lebron james and he's exactly. gonna do it. And like like frank vogel is a defensive coordinator for this team 
This team does not like this team is a bunch of street ballers who try to put it together when LeBron James isn't out there. So they kind of suck. But LeBron is going to take like when LeBron is out there when he's healthy, it doesn't matter. It just yeah, doesn't. He's the X, fix, X factor. Yeah. Now with like Jokic is going to win the MVP. Jokic is going to lead the Nuggets probably to a two seed behind the Jazz in the Western Conference Finals. But LeBron is going to be more impactful when it's all said and done in the postseason than Jokic is going to be to the Nuggets. So I just don't think it matters. I, don't, I think they're going to win the West no matter what. The only team I think that can compete with them is going to be the Clippers. Truthfully, I know they implode every year. I know they, but they are playing. Their DVOA is incredible. When Paul with Paul George and Kawhi healthy and Pat Beverly's perimeter defense and fire, I just I don't know how they're. Well, going. I also think the Clippers are ever since the the trade deadline with Rondo. I think they're ten and one or eleven and one since adding him, and he's just a veteran player who knows what to do. He knows how to play. I think he's a big head. reason why the. I think yeah. it's a huge reason why the Lakers actually won the title last year. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I think the Clippers are given. I think the Clippers give them the biggest threat, and I also I also believe that the Utah Jazz in a seven game series. Um, could be a real difficult out for this Lakers team that's going to be, um, I think, a little bit rusty. I, I, I believe you with you guys too. I think I think LeBron James. You just add LeBron James to any mix, and he gets to the finals. It's just it's been his it's been his it's been the arc of his career. That's what he's done. Doesn't matter. He gets to the finals. Period. That's what he does. So, um, moving on, the Knicks eight wins in a row. You know, break we, up we the Knicks. Jeez. Yeah, we didn't I go on thought. this. Uh, we didn't talk about this a little while ago because you know you just assume that they're going to fall off. But right now, Knicks fans out there are clamoring for everybody to take notice of this Eastern Conference team. Um, wherever they go, whoever they play, they seemingly find a way to win. Julius Randle has been a game changer. Barrett out of Duke has been a game changer for this team. This team is 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 very good, uh, and they play. They play youthful basketball up and down the court, scoring points. Um, they'll run you up and down the uh, on the court. We our boy JP won the JC Julius Randall's MVP. Didn't get that in the conversation the other day because it's not happening. But good call though, JP. I mean, you know, you know, he's playing well enough for this team to be considered a threat. So eight game winning streak again, regular season. We'll see how things go. They're young, um, but they're playing really, really well together right now. All right. Um, so I was on Sirius XM for a little bit earlier today, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, we got into a discussion about bananas for whatever reason. He was talking about fruit, and he said bananas are just you can't make you can't make bananas into a juice. And I it dawned on me I was like, well, you can make bananas into hot sauce. And then I went on a spiel about bomb banana. All right, go to seekthespice.com. It's National Banana Day, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, this is a small company started a year ago by a couple uh, of friends, friends of the show from the University of Michigan. I'm sorry, you know, um, out of their dorm room. I say that. I don't know if it was out of their garage or their dorm room. Out of their, house. Where was it? Out of their, out house. Of their house. I see. I, I don't I believe everybody younger than me lives in a dorm room. That's just how I believe this works. I think if you're younger <laughs> Scott, than me. Sky, how's your dorm room, man? Yeah, it's really small. Room there, Scott. It's really right. small. I, Jonathan, how's your dorm room, man? It's looking pretty, uh, pretty nice. Mine's very small. Better ones. I think are those, mine a bunch of, are those a bunch of press passes behind you, Jonathan? Y yes. It's, okay. It's the cool. Glory days of my media yeah. coverage. I like it. Yeah. Remember when I? Hey, did you remember when I had that huge, huge, huge uh, lanyards of all mine in the office? Yeah. I don't I know, know where those are. Did I don't you, know where those are. Did you lose my championship ring also that you commandeered? No, it's got to be somewhere. Ryan Leaf has my championship ring. I just want people to know that. Well, you left it. I did leave it. Like more than once. The virus kept me out of the office, and then the office got All right, Bomb Banana is banana-based, not to be confused with banana-flavored. Hot sauce delivered exceptional and robust chili spice to any and all foods. Two different spices, Mui Mui and the more mild kind. White bottle um, and red bottle are the differing versions of that, all right? Um, there you go. There you go. Bomb banana hot sauce. You can't go wrong with either sauce. My favorite thing about bomb banana it's a, is, is on food that you put the sauce on. The website, seekthespice.com. That's seekthespice.com, all one word. And today you can receive 10% off your first order by using the promo code LEAF, L-E-A-F, like on a tree. 
at checkout. Bomb Banana Hot Sauce, absolutely fantastic. Beyond excited to have the opportunity to work with this new and emerging hot sauce company. Bomb Banana, it's the bomb. Just, right. just saying, not non-biased, I'm a big fan of it. No connection, just a big fan of Bomb Banana. Likewise. Oh, my man. I freaking talked about it on Sirius XM today, and I put it on my uh, – slathered in, in my eggs and uh, uh, st- my steak and eggs this morning. There you go. Cool. Look at this guy. Just throwing it up there. He's just full of full of marketing. Uh, <laughs> That's what I do. All right. Um, we didn't talk about this. It, it flashed up as the show started, a little bit of breaking news, so I don't – pretty sure you don't have a banner for it. But the college football um, committee uh, discussed today – um, moving the college football playoff to six or six from six wow. to 16 teams. Um, nothing was finalized and they don't believe nothing um, likely to happen though until 2025. And, you know, we'll all be way too old then to even care about college football. So um, that was discussed. You know, they, they said the same thing last year. It was discussed. Um, most likely won't happen until the contract's up with ESPN where they need to renegotiate. They're making boatloads of money. It's all they care about. Um, they could care less really about the fans' reaction or the lack of fan reaction because the ads uh, are still selling for the same for every commercial dur- during the national championship. Okay. Our question of the day, who does the San Francisco 49ers draft at third overall? They gave up a King's Ransom to move to number three. They've told us they they moved to get a quarterback. We know that three consecutive quarterbacks are going to go in this year's draft for only the third time in its history. What do you guys think? What are some of our answers there in terms of what people think the 49ers are going to do, fellas? All right, I, your local sports doc. Yeah. 49ers should draft Justin Fields. I know his issues. What are his issues? I don't think he has issues. Is his issues his epilepsy that we – Talked about on Wednesday. I mean, is that the issue? I don't think that's the issue. Is it a single, no issue. a single great season kind of a thing? I a lot of college quarterbacks have that though, right? The lack of a, of a of a the lack of a, a booklet of experience like Trevor Lawrence is three years starting like that. Like Justin you know, Fields has got two, two full Fields years has, as a starter that went all the way into the national championship. I know yeah. one of them was cut short because of COVID, but I mean that's I'm kind of just devil's advocate like so, that that's a knock think, that I hear some people yeah, say. Yeah, I don't think you can say there's a lack of experience. Well, then, then, then you have to tear down Trey Lance for sure, 12 starts. You have to tear down Mac Jones, 13 starts. Davis and you have to tear down Davis, Davis Hills, yeah, 12 yeah, starts. Yeah. You know, it, it goes in it goes in order of this. It goes Trevor Lawrence, Kellen Mond, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields in terms of starts. That's, that's the highest four there are out there right now. Trevor Lawrence has got three consecutive years of, of full starts under his belt. Um, and you could say, you know, he was going to be the first overall pick if they would allow him to leave after his freshman year to maintain that with the expectation and not regress, um, says a lot about, you know, why Trevor Lawrence is the number one guy. Okay. What else? Who else we got here? Yeah, we got plenty. Um, we've been kind of chatting in the, in the group here about the question of the day. Uh, we have a lot of other questions though, with a few minutes, if you want to get in some Q and a. All right, let's let's have them, boys. What do we got today on this Friday afternoon? All right, I'm scanning through here. I did want to get to JD's. We we left off last time. He didn't get it. So Ryan, let's let's get one in here really quick. JP, same question as Monday. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to that. What, what, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what yeah. is that one? Holy crap! This is the real. What was was he assuming that it was going to be a fake Ryan Leaf or? I, I, guess I think Davis is happened. new. You never know. That Davis, are you tuning in for the first time? I think Davis is one of JP's boys. JP recruited some boys to watch the show, and, and I could be wrong, but I think Davis is yes. one of JP's boys. Cool. He's like, Ryan Leaf? No way. And then he came, and he's like, oh, crap, it's Ryan Leaf. There you go. Well, <laughs> I can attest that I am the real Ryan Leaf. Uh, I have yet to meet and the real another Ryan, Ryan Leaf. Leaf. Please stand up. But there I, we go. But I know. Oh, uh, shouts out to Davis Jones, are, uh, first time. There are other Ryan Leafs out there. I know that. Just go on like Instagram or something According like that. According to Venmo. And not like phony accounts. Like literally, the guy's name is Ryan Leaf. Good one, Scott. Guy. <laughs> According to Venmo. All right, what do we got? All right, let's get to, uh, let's, let's get to JP here. Uh, same question same as Monday. Same question as Monday. If you were an athlete coming out of college, would you prefer Adrian Peterson's legs or Jason Campbell's arm? 
Very random, JP. Um, uh, Adrian Peterson's legs, simply because yeah. uh, they were Hall of Fame legs, and they are Hall of Fame legs. I got the opportunity to watch him play in the Holiday Bowl against my brother. My brother was the quarterback for Oregon and brought a furious comeback against the Sooners. But ultimately, Adrian Peterson, who my brother simply said as he walked off the field and told me about the game, was that that dude is a man. That was all he had to say to me, and that's exactly what that is. I'm going with Adrian Peterson's legs. He's a future Hall of Famer, um, and those things carried uh, this man a mile longer than I think a lot of people thought they ever would. You think he'll pick up a job this year? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think he'll probably go through any camps or something. It'll be a team that needs um, needs something. He'll sign a, a team friendly contract right before the end of camp and probably go in and, and, uh, and you know, be productive. In fact, you know, Detroit may want him back. Who knows? So speaking of long-term uh, running backs, I happen to be repping my boy right behind me here. Another one from JP really quick while we're talking about legendary running backs is Frank Gore's career worth the hall of fame. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was, I mean, the amount of yardage he's run for, his durability, the fact that he looks the same that he did since he was 21, I think that says a lot that he treated his body well and wasn't uh, – <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, think, I think he's third in, in career rushing yards as well. So for him to yeah. be excluded from the Hall of Fame, that, that, that'd be a joke. So I think, yes, he is Hall of Fame. Yeah, JP, we're going to uh, vote yes on that one. Uh, Ryan, one, one, quarter, one quarterback we haven't talked about very much um, is Kyle Trask and Bill Powell – Wants to know your thoughts on Kyle Trask. I think he's an exceptional player. What he was able to do to fill in for Felipe Franks and, and be successful. I think, you know, when we give quarterbacks like Mac Jones a ton of credit because of the talent he's had around him, I think he, that's that's hampered Kyle Trask too. The fact that he had a once in a generation hybrid kind of tight end in Kyle Pitts, but he was exceptional last year. He really was. So I'm a little surprised that he is getting dismissed as much as Mac Jones is getting considered as, as a meteoric rise. Um, I, I, I am, um, I suspect him to be either a late second or possibly, you know, middle of the third round, um, quarterback. Uh, if he slips to the fourth, then there'll be some things that they saw in the workouts or in meetings and things like that. Um, that we didn't, that we weren't privy to, but, you know, I, I think he's going to be a. Uh, I think he's going to be a very capable backup quarterback in the NFL. And if he does get an opportunity, does get a shot, you know, I think he'll he'll make the most of it. So, all right, let us know what you thought about the new start time. We're going to stay with that for a while. How we? How was that? Was the viewership? Was it? Was it uh, what you expected, Jonathan? Yeah, consistently better. And okay. And and Ryan, I'll tell you this right now. I did ask in the comment section while you were talking, thumbs up on the new time slot. All right, there we go. I like it too. It gives me a little time in between my uh, Sirius XM show. How I have a voice right now, I don't know. Draft week's going to be hectic, people. It's going to be a, a it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, come along for the ride. We'll see you next Monday at twelve thirty p.m. Pacific on here on YouTube. You can also listen to and download the audio on the Leaf Podcast Network, the Ryan D. Leaf Show. You can get it on any platform that you get your podcast at. Please rate, review, and subscribe uh, if you want to listen to the audio only. Thanks for being with us. We're having a blast doing the show. We'll keep doing it the best we can. We'll see you next Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.